All right. Hey, Regina, how you doing? I'm doing well, Coach. How are you? All is well. We just got off of one of our many calls, our coaching calls. And man, it's been an amazing journey to get to this point, hasn't it? It really has been. When I really think about whenever I first entered this journey for mindset, purpose, coaching, and my mindset was kind of all over the place and just not really being confident in my purpose. And one thing that I really take away from this program is one understanding that I don't seek for, I don't go and look for my purpose. My purpose right. finds me. And one thing that I've learned is that my purpose has found me in many different ways outside of the four walls of the church. And so that purpose has found me in my marriage. That purpose has found me at work. That purpose has found me in many different spaces and places and even reflecting on it in some of the things that I've done, um, speaking engagements. I really didn't know that that was my purpose finding me because I was searching for something else. That's good. And I think oftentimes a lot of people assume that they mm -hmm. have to chase purpose, but that what they fail to realize is that purpose is revealed in stages. And if your mindset is not a magnet, and if you're not becoming the person as God that God foresees you to be, then you want to track those purpose pieces. And so tell us a little bit more about uh, before you joined the program, like really go deeper into uh, where you were mentally and where you were purpose wise and in what really got caught your eye about this program. So before this program, purpose wise, I was being a visionary encourager. Um, my mm -hmm. motto was basically don't delay, write your vision today. So the company I have called Write the Vision is basically helping people to create a strategic action plan to achieve God's vision for their life and doing that, utilizing a smart goal concept. Before that, one thing that I was one thing I was not was consistent. And so I saw various cycles where I would start and stop or what some people would call you abort the vision or abort the mission. And the reason why I would start and stop was because I got into the world's mentality of what success is. And mm -hmm. because I was not seeing those tangible results, I would start and stop. And with the various calls that we had, even up until today, the one thing that I realized the missing piece of that puzzle was mastery, mastery, mm -hmm. discipline and consistency. So I wasn't consistent enough in the things of business. So I wasn't consistent enough to see what the fruit could be. And mm -hmm. so aside of me yielding the good fruit, what I was yielding was fruit of struggle, fruit of stress and worry. And that was because I really wasn't allowing God to take the lead in the God idea that was given to me. I was trying to be the face of what God has given me. So I was making myself the gift giver mm -hmm. and not recognizing and honoring the gift that was given from the gift giver. And so now as a result of our conversations and me really getting to the heart of the matter and the root cause of things from self-esteem to um, rejection to abandonment and really taking the time to unpack those things because those things are very impactful on purpose and mindset. And those things really, I didn't understand how the some of those things were still rooted and I had to go back and examine those roots and uproot them in order to get to and understand, okay, I'm in this place where my purpose is being developed. My purpose of encouraging, my purpose of inspiring is still being developed and how I can, through mastery and consistency and discipline, then transition into purpose dissemination. And that's so, so key. That was a lot. <laughs> Good stuff. It wasn't a lot. That's a lot. Okay. And that's what I want all my viewers to understand about Regina. That's a lot in her. And throughout this process, we really pulled a lot of those weeds up so that the seeds cannot have any hindrances. And that's what we talked about in our program about mindset and how our minds are gardens and mm -hmm. thoughts are seeds seed. and yep. thinking is rain and our thought patterns are plants. And we are eating the fruit of yesterday's thoughts. Mm -hmm. And now watching Regina, it was an amazing journey watching you go from, hey, I want purpose. And then when you realize, oh, my mindset is not where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. The humility and the awareness that it took for you to say, okay, I need some mindset work was so pivotal. I guess we'll transition now. What would you say was the biggest 
mental transformation that you experienced. And also, uh, uh, I guess you kind of already talked about purpose a little bit, but let's stay with the mindset. What was mm-hmm. the biggest transformation that you had mentally? The first group coaching call that we had and uh, with the past the play cohort, the best cohort. I'm just going to put that oh, up. I, I ain't even say yeah. that, y'all. I ain't, pay, <laughs> I ain't pay her to say that either. I ain't pay her to so, say that. So really, um, and it's basically, essentially what you just st- stated, where thoughts are seeds. But mm. what I didn't understand is, how those seeds and the roots of those seeds, how rooted they were. Yeah. You know, sometimes like whenever using your analogy of plants, we don't see below the soil, right? Yeah. So it's like what I was not seeing with my thoughts that were those seeds, what where those roots were. I didn't take the time to examine the soil and that soil, the negative pattern of thinking that I had mm. or and how those things kept me from moving forward. I was stuck in perfectionism. I was trying to wait on the right moment and the right time to where I didn't take action on certain things that I missed out on a lot of opportunities because of that, because of fear and what people think. And God says in in his word, I believe it's in Galatians, am I trying to please God or am I trying to please Mm -hmm. man? And so even in this course um, and after that first session, um, group coaching session where you talked about thoughts becoming seeds that I had to also realize and examine my circle. Like what was I listening to people wise who was around me that also planted seeds, whether it was doubt regarding my business or even doubt about what God said about what right the vision and any other project that I had would be. So the first session I knew I was in the right space and place. I'm so glad about that. And Regina is a highly successful person. And people often assume Mm -hmm. that highly successful people do not struggle mentally. I'm not saying struggle like she was out here down bad. I'm not saying that. But you'll be surprised the little thoughts that Mm -hmm. creep in. Like the, I think we helped, we unpacked a little bit. I don't know if that was you or someone else, the imposter syndrome. We talked about Mm -hmm. all (laughs) kind of talk about that, like, and how the imposter syndrome uh, almost caused you, actually caused you not to be consistent and and not being able to put videos out and all that good stuff. Yes, absolutely. Because one thing is like, okay, God, you've given me this. And one thing that I treasure, I treasure the gift that God has given me, Mm -hmm. but that perfectionism makes me want to execute flawlessly, but I'm flawed, right? So I'm perfectly imperfect because there's only one perfect person. That's right, amen. then because of that, then it's like, oh, man, like I don't have a good story to tell or this space is too big for me or I'm not enough. I'm not qualified. Mm. And so Coach Josh took me through this exercise of writing out my resume. Like what was the resume for my life? And then I can see not only from childhood, but through my adolescence, through my mm. young adult years and now into my working professional years and now into my marriage years where I have a resume that qualifies me for the call. Mm -hmm. And so I can see where I've gotten qualifications and gained experience along the way. Thank goodness some of those experiences were for a season, like a job. It can be for a season. Mm -hmm. So, but doing that resume was allowed, it allowed me to kind of say to the imposter syndrome, like, no, like I'm enough. I am supposed to be here. In my experience, good, bad, ugly, indifferent, it Mm -hmm. qualifies me to be here so yeah that's that was an amazing work that we had to go through because that gripped me at one point you know an imposter syndrome is like someone's going to find out that you're a fraud or mm-hmm. somebody's going to find the imperfections in your systems but then there's no imperfect there's no imperfections in the holy spirit system in working through us and that's so true. many believers cannot executing a purpose is because they're so caught up in the world's way of success. So let's take some time um, to talk about um, um, your, what, what would you say was your favorite part of the program? Oh, it was a lot. Um, oh, yeah. I it all. The fate, I would say my favorite part, and I, and I even hop on this in some of our sessions was differentiating between because there was a question you proposed to the group um, and you gave your three phases of purpose and I learned that I was in purpose development 
but I desire to transition into purpose dissemination. Mm -hmm. And so how that all tied into what I'm doing now is like now I'm being developed, but I also, and being developed, I have to be open to the process of developing rather it's developing and removing bad habits, developing and and taking every thought captive, rather it is looking at my resume and taking that experience and then using that experience and knowledge in different spaces and places. So that was my favorite part because I feel like at that juncture, I opened my mind to, okay, you know what? I'm being developed right now. And as you stated before, like the world, there's this desire for microwave success. And Mm -hmm. whenever you look at great people that do great things, success didn't come right away. Success have, may have taken some people years. Some says some uh, success may have taken them months, but there was a process and there was a journey. And the thing about the journey is you remember the journey, but not too many people focus on the destination right. because the process of getting to that destination meant more than actually getting to the destination. That's good. Now, tell me a little bit about that breakthrough you had. I remember you say you, you went months. I don't know how long it was from doing or going live. Let's talk about how, I don't know how much of the program helped you with that. Like, tell us mm-hmm. about that and, and the experiences pre going live, going live, and and now after going live, now two or three times so far. So before going live, it was also that imposter syndrome that kicked yeah. in mm-hmm. and full gear and also fear. And yeah. it was, I don't have anything to say. Nobody's gonna watch this live or some people are gonna co- come in the comments and be trolls. And I just felt, I really talked myself out of it because I just felt that I had nothing of value to add or say. And then I got the challenge from Coach Josh in a a a group coaching call where it was like, okay, go live this week. And I was like, oh my God. So (laughs) I did go live that week. Um, Actually, it was my birthday weekend. And I wrote down some things um, that were on my heart to say. Um, and I prayed about them. And then what I noticed was after I did the live, because if you watch the live, I was very hesitant and nervous. We're going to post, the link. We're gonna post the link below. <laughs> and so after that live, what I saw was um, it was actually a, a person I went to high school with, believe it or not. And she commented, like, I really needed this. Wow. And yeah. so what that let me know is like even... For anyone that's watching this, like if God prompts you to do something, don't sit on it. Be obedient and do it. And then the second time when I went live recently, I was on a prayer walk and I told Coach Josh that I was going to do this video, do this video. Now, remember, imposter syndrome and perfectionism is rising. And so on the prayer walk, it was like, do this live, do this live, do this live. And my spirit just had no rest. And so I was like, man, I look a mess. And so I just did it. And then after that, same thing, I'm a colleague now. You know, this message was right on time uh, because I talked about doing personal security checkpoints. And so it's sometimes we are the hold up. So how are we to do a disservice to God and hold up the gift that he has given us and not share what he's given us so other people can get their healing or get their encouragement or get their inspiration or get their soul food for the day. And so we can't hold up. We can be the answer to someone's problem for that day. But if I was not obedient and I would have sat in that, I would have missed the opportunity to encourage or minister or whatever term you want to use to that person that needed it in that moment. What's so amazing about that, Regina, is that oftentimes we become selfish with our giftings Mm -hmm. and we forget that the gift was meant to be given. And God is looking at us like none of those internal struggles are enough in regards to excuses for you not to execute. God is looking... Go ahead. Yes, yes. And that's what I was making. When I really... I thought about it. I was making excuses because I was scared and I didn't want to fail. And while that's okay, you know, it's one of those things, but you're going to make mistakes. It's never going to be perfect. It's never going to be the perfect time. It's never going to be the right time, but it's still pushing and pressing through that. That matters. So key, because everybody, I heard there's a quote up there that says, if you wait for perfect conditions to do something, you'll never get anything done. And oftentimes we forget as believers that we are in partnership with the Holy Ghost. 
The Holy Ghost is what makes imperfections perfectly placed. Like, mm -hmm. like he, he'll take a video. You may be in a bonnet. You may be in, in <laughs> gym clothes or you may be you know, fresh out of a board meeting. No matter how you look, it doesn't matter how well you look. It's about how anointed the words are. And for those people to be in your comments saying, Regina, girl, thank you. Mm -hmm. That's inspirational. And so I'm proud of you for that. And, and I pray this video is through Regina's story is helping you all say, hey, man, I've been, God, the Holy Spirit's been telling me to go live. And now mm -hmm. is my time. Just a couple more questions. I know you have to go. Um, or we, I think we both have to go, honestly. <laughs> <We both. laughs> what would you say in three months of this program, mm -hmm. how much and how much and where have you grown because of the program? Oh, I've grown in my mindset. I I take those negative thoughts captive yeah. because I don't want those seeds to take root. So I'm better at that. Um, also, you gave us an exercise to practice gratitude, like three things like you're grateful for. Or even just write down like the three things that you're grateful for. You say so. Now it's, I'm in a place where I'm content with what I have, where I am, still desiring to grow, yes. but I'm recognizing what I have around me and what I'm what I'm able to utilize and what I'm able to leverage in my purpose as I develop my purpose and as I look to distribute my purpose. So good, and I'm so glad this program was able to serve you that way. Last question. Why should people be a part of this program? If you truly want to shift your mindset and renew your mind and you want to break habits and patterns um, that no longer serve you and or if you feel like you're in a place where you're stuck, um, you feel like you're not hearing from God or you just truly want to understand your purpose, how to develop it, how to disseminate it, um, but more importantly, how to get a good foundation in your in your purpose overall. And this is definitely the course for you. It is you will walk away with so many keys of wisdom. Um, you will also appreciate the hard work uh, because this course is work and you have to be willing to do the work. It's like entering into the operating room and putting yourself on the table. You're going to get cut and there is a recovery process. But coach walks you through each part of the process. And so that's the most rewarding. It's the group coaching I really love. Um, you have different peers in your cohort. And then you have your sessions with coach where you're able to either dive into some of the content that was presented. Or if there are other things that you would like to discuss, you have the opportunity to get that one on one time as well to get feedback and that accountability that is also needed. So good, Regina. So tell the people a little bit about yourself, what you offer, and all that great giftings you have in you that we're going to post oh. to below is this video right now. Oh, Coach, don't put me on the spot. <laughs> so here we go. My spot, your spot. <laughs> so I'm the founder of Write the Vision, See It, Believe It, Achieve It, where I help people develop strategic action plans to achieve their goals. Um, I'm on Instagram, write the vision dot today. Um, you will see some live videos and you will see some encouraging content. And I just truly want people to honestly pursue what God has laid on their heart while keeping in mind that you also have to check your diet. You have to watch what you listen to, who you talk to, the things that you consume. Um, consumption is key. And you want to make sure that you are consuming the right things. When you have vision, vision determines your diet. Vision determines who you listen to, what you watch, what you do, where you go. And so I definitely want to encourage people um, to take that step and be fruitful because we're purposefully planted. God planted us here to be an influence and not under the influence. And so that's what I do. Um, I have a book out um, called Open Your Heart and Write Your Vision. It's like a devotional. Um, but in that devotional, it was very healing for me because it was some wounds that I was dealing with and working through at that time. And so God had me package it in a book. And so that was a book that I wrote to my healed self. And so very proud of that as well. And then I have a podcast, uh, Open Your Heart, where with my guests, it's more so for them to share their testimony. But I have them enter into the operating room and share their wounds and their surgical procedures and their healing process and talk about where they are now. So I'm out here trying to disseminate my purpose, coach. 
Listen, listen, that's what I'm here for. Uh, how long you been watching? Oh man, I found Coach. 2017, this is when Coach was on YouTube and a blackboard was in the background. <laughs> back, back in the day. Y'all can go find that video. It was back, back, back in the day. 2017, a long time ago. And so it was one of my, a, a good friend that I worked with, um, I went to college with, or undergrad, um, named Curtis Blue. Um, he introduced me to you and also Dr. Miles Monroe. Mm -hmm. And so, and during that time, that was my single season because I'm married now. But... Amen. It was the way that coach explained the word and the acronyms, because I'm a person for acronyms, too. Mm -hmm. But the way that the word was broken down and then also the practical application of the word, because he doesn't just give you the word. He also breaks down the word and then gives you three to four steps like on how to apply the word. And I think sometimes that's a key piece that we miss, even in our own study time where we study the word, but we don't ask for the revelation for the application yeah. of the word. Like, right. God, how do I apply this verse to my life? And that's one thing that really stuck out to me about your videos. It was, it was true teaching, but also teaching with application. Yeah, that was the whole goal. And, and for those who's watching us right now, listen, so much gift is inside of you. This program is for you. This program is to help you go from being mentally cluttered to being mentally clear so that you can appear in the domain of your purpose. And just like Regina told you, in three months, she was able to have some breakthroughs. And, and we want to ensure uh, potentially for you, for those who are interested, um, that you engage in this. And um, Regina, last question. You don't got to necessarily tell the, the, the investment that you put in, but how much was this program worth your investment? It was, it was well worth the investment. I feel that the program far exceeded my expectations. Um, and I have, you know, been part of other coaching programs, but I really felt that this, um, I think also with coaching programs, you have to find your fit. And what yeah. I mean is find that person that resonates with you, um, but also speaks to the things that you believe in, but is also going to hold you accountable. And I got all of those things and more uh, between the worksheets and the life work and the digest and then the group chats and then the group coaching calls. I felt that this program far exceeded my expectations. And now Regina's in a stage where she's going to develop. She's going to take these points and mastery and master them. And then she'll be ready for the next one. And I just want to let you guys know about the two programs that we offer. We offer a resilient mindset program. This is what Regina just went through. It's a hybrid program of mindset and beginning levels of purpose. Uh, the next couple of programs a little bit different. The, the second program is called Fulfillment. Um, that's, and I, I, I put Regina through some of that. Um, we've been going through the five steps of high fulfillment. What step are you on right now, Regina? Becoming. The becoming stage. So there's five <laughs> steps to fulfillment. There's awareness, belief, um, becoming. She's in a becoming phase and then we'll get into the having and and this is for high level people, people who are really serious about the next level. So that's the fulfillment program and the fulfillment elite is, is, is a, a hybrid program as well for those who are highly successful individuals, highly serious people who are ready to fulfill at a high level in every area. And so there's going to be, there's going to be um, a lot of hard work uh, but you have to be willing to invest in you. And so I pray that Regina's testimony has inspired you. Um, if, if you've been waiting on the fence, you've been looking in, he's like, hey, man, I've been seeing these little snippets or whatever. It's time. It's, it's time. time. And so we love you. All the links for Regina and everything she is doing is going to be below. And I'm so proud of you, Regina. You worked hard these three months. Thank you. Now Thank you need you. about three, four, five months to digest. Yes, I got. I'm gonna. I'm in my mastery now. So now I gotta master everything that she taught. Like you said, it's a, it's like grade school. You master that level before you get promoted to the next level. So I'm definitely gonna take everything that Coach Josh has given me, all the tools, all the life work, and now I have to apply it. I have to master it, and then I'll see you all in the next class. All right, <laughs> I love you, my sister. Thank you so much for your time. I think we have about a few more sessions left, but but I, I'm going to shed a tear when you go, but I know you'll come back. Oh, um, cool, Coach. Yeah, but it was an <laughs> honor to serve you. 
And those out there, I look forward to serving you as well. Love you all. Y'all be blessed. Links in the description box below. Check out Regina. If you need a coach and you feel the vibes from Regina, man, go hire Regina. Regina, put some on. Go on out there and get her as your coach now. She's been trained by one of the best. <laughs> Love y'all. Y'all have a blessed one. Peace.